Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to have you back. Thank you for being here. We will open the first afternoon workshop on the following topic, so funding and support of research projects. And I love the topic of this workshop because funding and support of research projects in agritech implies a lot of pedagogy and sometimes philosophy because we are talking about agriculture, life cycles, the living, and that implies a longer development time than usual. But that doesn't mean, but that doesn't mean that the topic is not meaningful and important. For, the wor for this workshop, I am pleased to have with me four amazing people. First of all, Pierre de Moitier. Good afternoon, Pierre. You are qualified attaché at the Department of Research and Technological Development at the Public Service of Wallonia. We also have Tina Jacobs. Good afternoon. You are the International Affairs Advisor at the Research Foundation of Flanders FWO. We also have Valérie Duo. Good afternoon. You are the representative to the program Committee of Cluster 6, Food, Bioeconomy, Natural Resources, Agriculture and Environment at the Ministry of Higher Education and Research in France. And we also have Sylvia Bursens, who's the project manager for supporting Horizon Europe projects, impact of a dedicated team at the Ghent University. I will let each of you introduce yourselves, starting with you, Pierre, with your presentation slides. Well, hello, everyone. So my name is Pierre de Moitier. I work at the Public Service of Wallonia in more specifically at the research program department. So we are the administration um, that fin funds projects, research projects introduced by universities, research centers or companies. I do not want to bore you with uh, tons of, sh of numbers, but I just want to remind you a couple of things. Within the administration of research, we are 70 agents within three departments. So research program, research, research uh, projects, and then accompaniment uh, and um, support. So the three departments have very specific missions, but generally speaking, um, the, the, the general mission is to uh, support uh, the project leaders, the project holders. Last year, our budget was 517 millions. In uh, 2022, we signed 739 conventions between the traditional partners with university um, um, and research centers, whatever the size might be. And we also have um, um, a direction that we follow um, a, a guideline that was uh, created a couple of months ago, which is the S3. You have uh, the, the link on the presentation. So the link is s3.wallonie.be and you will have more information there. So those are the action lines that the government asks us to follow. So I will continue and then stop there. The SPW is also a network of scientific advisors and academic advisors. So the network is not huge if we compare it to the French network, but that's already um, important. We have one in Munich, in Switzerland, in the US, in Scandinavia, a fifth one in Brazil and new positions will open very soon. We have uh, one in Paris and one in uh, Spain. We have also 13 competitivity 
poles and clusters which are all active in very specific fields for example agrobiotech uh, logistics um, and so on and we briefly discussed it uh, earlier, but we also have a scientific magazine, which is called Athena. And we have 23,000 um, um, editions available, and it is completely free. And then through the programs in which we participate, for example, European programs of future partnerships, Wallonia, has a potential uh, collaboration with more than 70 countries. I've said it before, but we will need to uh, do the math here, but our beneficiaries, well, we have around one third of beneficiaries that are uh, companies, uh, PMEs or uh, larger companies then one-fifth universities, one-fourth would be research centers, and then the rest would be partners, for example, awareness raising um, associations. Then I will now go to the heart of uh, the topic, and then I will be way shorter because I'm only allowed to speak for five minutes. So we have two types of uh, helps, of subventions, regional and international. So how does it work? Well, there are um, subventions that are opened for the whole year, for example, from January to December, or that are based on calls uh, that are opened and to which you need to uh, candidate. So how can I know which one is more interesting for me? Well, on our website, uh, you will find brochures at the entrance of the auditorium. Um, but the website was articulated in that spirit. So now you can just click um, on uh, the available uh, subventions and you will see. Uh, what is available uh, to you, what is uh, more meaningful to you. If you want to create a company, for example, there's a, um, a, there are subsidies available. So the website was really designed to be more beneficiary oriented, to answer to the needs of the beneficiaries. All the topics are covered. Uh, so it's always a bottom-up approach. Uh, there's a, a smart specialization strategy that was implemented with various uh, strategic initiative uh, areas. And the last one is the more interesting for today, which is uh, agri-food uh, chains of the future and um, innovative environmental management. And if you allow me, I would like to uh, talk briefly about a project which might be interesting to you, or at least those of you who come from France today. There's a pro uh, program, Beware program, that is co-funded by Wallonia and the European Commission. And we are hiring tw uh, 65 people, most of them doctors, um, and in the framework of the Marie Curie uh, actions. So we have research funding by my department and we can create collaborations between universities and enterprises. And I can only invite you to um, uh, register. So um, things have changed a bit. The presentation has changed a bit, but you have the link here. Um, the, the website for uh, the, pro the program that I've just talked about. And then you also see my uh, email address and the LinkedIn account of the SPW, which I will uh, invite you to follow. Thank you. Bonjour. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, I will quickly change the slide. So my name is Tina Jacobs. I'm advisor for international affairs at the um, research foundations in Flanders. And if you allow me, I will continue in English because my French is far from perfect. So 
Yes. A lot of slides, and I know we had to take it to a minimum, but I trust that the organization will be very helpful and will share maybe after this uh, conference the slides as well, because I inserted the links to our website so you can really have a look at all the details uh, afterwards. So I will go through some slides very fast, and I see that the layout is not optimal either. It was uh, due to a change from the Google Drive to the system here. So. Um, the FWO, so we are the Research Foundation Flanders, and this is what we stand for. So we really fund uh, the fundamental research and the strategic basic research. We also have funding for research infrastructure, and here you see the five pillars uh, of our mission. So we fund research, which is performed mainly at universities. It concerns bottom-up funding in all disciplines. It's, the main criterion is scientific excellence, so it's really an inter-university competition. We stand for transparent and equal opportunities, and international cooperation is also one of our five pillars, which we think is very important for such a small region like Flanders, with excellent researchers like some of you. The main research performing centers in Flanders for the people from France or maybe the Loon speaking part of Belgium are still looking for a partner in Flanders. We have our five world-class universities and we also have some uh, several leading strategic research centers. And now I will really focus on what FWO can offer you or how we can stimulate the Flemish-French collaboration. So these are the current possibilities at the FWO. We have our fellowships PhD, from PhD level onwards. We have the fellowships for fundamental research as well as uh, strategic basic research. Those are really yearly calls. It's a fixed timeline. You can easily find all information online. It's open to all nationalities. So also for uh, the, the French um, researchers who are present here, the only requirement is that uh, the researcher, the applicant, has a European master degree. And there is also the possibility uh, for the recognition procedure to NARIC, of course. Then we have our postdoctoral fellowships, also yearly call, also, also open for uh, French nationals. We have our Odysseus program, it's really the flagship program of the FWO. It's for the more established researchers and it's a two yearly call. So the next call will probably be launched uh, in spring 2024 with a deadline on the 30th of September 2024. What, what is really unique about Odysseus is that um, the applicants who are successful, they get offered a really fixed position at one of our universities in Flanders, and there is of course also the funding who is not, uh, yeah, who is quite big, so, so it's really to establish your research in Flanders, bring your research team from abroad to Flanders and continue the work here. The research projects, uh, another funding opportunity. We have our regular project fundamental research. Deadline is always 1st of April. And since 2019, we have the Money Follows collaboration opportunity. So up to 10% of the total FWO budget can go to a partner abroad, to a non-Flemish uh, research institution even. So French partners can get up to 10% of the total funding. Then we have our more specific program, Applied Biomedical Research. We call it TBM in Dutch, of course. Um, it's really a research that contributes on the longer term to the creation of new therapies, new diagnostic tools, in which the industry at the moment doesn't... It, there is a lack of interest from the industry at the moment. This is one of the requirements. We also have our um, research project for strategic basic research that have an um, economic or societal fin finality, also a yearly call. And in these two programs, it's even up to 20% of the total budget that can go to a foreign partner, so a co-applicant, it's called uh, in this channel. And then we have our EOS project. It's the Excellence of Science program. It's um, a program that we have together with the colleagues from FRS, FNRS. It's really to promote joint fundamental research between researchers um, 
in Flanders and um, yeah, in, in the Flemish and in the French speaking community of Belgium. But also there, um, non-Belgian partners can be co-applicants. We call them the type four uh, research groups. And they can also apply for 10% of the budget. So then here are some smaller schemes for mobility. We have our Tournesol program together with the, the French embassy in Belgium. It's a yearly call and for FWO the focus here is really on the junior researchers. The ones who apply and also the ones who perform the exchange to France are the more junior ones. With CNRS, so the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique, we also have um, some schemes together with them. And then something quite new since um, summer last year, I think, it's our incoming grants. So it's the grant for a scientific stay in Flanders is the official name. We do not work with a call for this program, but so it's a continuous submission system, but the applicant has to submit the, the proposal no later than three months before the departure date. So it's really a grant to welcome researchers from abroad to Flanders, but the added value for this, the research stay in Flanders is really crucial. So in the application, they really have to demonstrate why it is crucial that this specific expert or researcher is coming to Flanders and what he or she will bring to the research group in Flanders. But this is also open for the French um, researchers, of course. And we have our outgoing grants. So for the researchers who are already in Flanders, who are working here or studying here, they can, for example, go towards France, um, participate in a conference. They can perform short study visits, even longer visits for up to one year. But all the details can be found online. And our funding for international contacts and networks in which Flemish and French groups can work together um, and partner up. And then as maybe to look a bit forward in the future, uh, a future possibility might be WEAVE. Um, and I hope that some of you already heard of this initiative. It's uh, the Research Funding Without Borders. So it's really a bottom-up cross-European initiative. It's developed by European research funders, such as the FWO and also the FNRS. The colleagues from FNRS are also involved. It's to support excellent collaborative bilateral or even trilateral research proce projects. And the main principle is the lead agency procedure. So it's a single evaluation of the proposals. So, in fact, a joint proposal only has to be submitted to one funding agency who is responsible for the entire evaluation procedure. And after the decision is taken, each funder funds its own researchers. So the funding does not go abroad. Added value, some points. Um, it's really to foster the balanced collaboration. And each applicant can really apply for the funding that is needed. So it's re it really concerns separate budgets and separate complete budgets. We are not talking here about 10% of the total budget, 20% really complete separate budgets. It's also bottom up. There are no thematic restrictions. So it's very complementary to ERANETS, partnerships or other European programs. There is no double jeopardy because only one funding agency performs the evaluation and takes the funding decision. The applicants, they are actually um, familiar with the regulations because WEAVE is always embedded in an already existing uh, funding program. So at FWO, we embedded WEAVE three years ago in our junior and senior uh, research project, Fundamental Research. So the, the researchers in Flanders, they really know the conditions, requirements, and each, fund, each researcher always has to comply with the rules and regulations of the own funder. So uh, it's quite easy, I think, if you know, of course, the system of your own funder. There is no separate budget needed from the fund funding agency either, because the proposals compete in the national funding scheme that is opened up within WEAF. Funding remains within borders, as I said, and there is no strategic behavior possible because the success rate within WEAF is kept at 20%. I said that there, were no, but, uh, that there were no thematic restrictions, but there are some of the partners within WEAVE, uh, like FORMAS, it's the Swedish uh, Research Council. They also fund bottom-up research, but they have their focus on environment 
agricultural sciences, so this might be very interesting for the people who are here, and spatial planning as well. So for the Swedish part of a WEAVE project, you really have to comply with the focus of FORMAS. So here you see in the red frame, these are the current FWO partners. We are already collaborating with eight uh, out of the 11 partners. There are still some um, that we are still uh, discussing or, or having contacts with and to see how we can partner up in the future. But what is important here is that um, around the weave table there are also observers and one of them is actually the uh, Agence Nationale de la, de la Recherche, ANR, from France. So we really hope that in the future uh, ANR would sign the weave agreement and can really join weave so that we can become bilateral partners as well. That was it. Thank you, Ultime. Sylvia. Oui, pardon, Valérie. Euh, Valérie, sorry. Bonjour, donc je m'appelle Valérie Dehaut. Je travaille. Good afternoon. So I work at the Ministry of Higher Education and Research in France, and I am in charge of the cluster six of um, Horizon Europe for a European and International Affairs delegation. And today I would like to present to you the French mechanism of uh, support for research and innovation actors. So since 2018, the um, Ministry of Higher Education and Research deployed a national plan, action plan, to support the French uh, research stakeholders, be it public or private. And the plan is drafted around three pillars uh, to incite, to accompany, and to influence. The national mechanism follows several objectives. The first one is to improve um, influence capacities on programmation. The th second one is communicate on uh, funding opportunities from Horizon Europe and participation modalities. And the third one is to support uh, candidates and uh, accompaniment structures. This the scheme is made of uh, four entities, so uh, RCPs, GTN, PCNs, NCPs in English, and uh, Horizon Europe Relays. And now I will go into details and present the roles of each uh, component. So first of all, we have the program committee representatives. So for cluster six, we have three. So we have one main representative, so that is the Minister of Higher Education and Research. So for cluster six, that is myself. And so the main RCP is supported by two uh, thematic uh, RCPs. So for cluster six, we have the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Sovereignty and the Ministry for uh, Ecological Transition and Territorial Cohesion. So RCPs represent France to uh, program committees of Horizon Europe, and that's also true for the other clusters of Horizon Europe, and they uh, defend the French position. RCPs play a key role as intermediaries between uh, the field actors and the European Commission. They also consult all national stakeholders through the GTN, which is the national thematic group that I will introduce right afterwards. The main RCP defines with uh, the, the colleagues the French position on the relevant cluster. 
including for the drafting of working programs for Horizon Europe. Then they share the information um, to the administrations and concerned um, national stakeholders. Then, at the end of project calls, the RCP collects, analyzes, and disseminates all the data linked to the global French participation and national actors. And then we compare that with the participation of other European stakeholders and we make statistics. The second component is the national thematic group, GTN. So that's a very important tool for the research ministry. And it's a pillar on which we really rely. So there is one GTN uh, per cluster. So it is a consultation structure for research stakeholders, so private or public research. GTN is animated by the three RCPs of cluster six, and they use that GTN to define the French position to be presented and supported in program committees at Horizon Europe. Inscription um, enrollment is managed by the ministry, so interested parties who want to participate in Horizon Europe reach out to the ministry and then they have a form to fill out. And if their skills are deemed interesting for the GTN, they can join the former. They have to sign confidentiality uh, document because uh, they should not disseminate uh, confidential documents uh, transferred by the European Commission. Then the third entity, which might be the one that you know, um, it's um, national um, contact points, so NCPs. They uh, need to disseminate the information to where is awareness and to support the research and innovation community at the framework program Horizon Europe. And then in the framework of the new scheme, we went from an expert uh, team to a professionalized team which offer a clearer service offer that is also more efficient. The Ministry of Research restructured the network in a more hybrid way with a central team around working around the coordinator in Paris and a closer network on the whole in the whole country, so in the regions. And then the last entity are Horizon Europe relays. So they will optimize the relation of NCPs with the supporting structures who will help the candidates in France. They are uh, chosen uh, support people of the French network. It is a two-year mandate and these relays share with the whole community all relevant information regarding Horizon Europe. So to conclude, I would like to call on all interested parties by Horizon Europe, by Cluster 6, if you want to prepare proposals with uh, a Franco-Belgian collaboration, you are uh, most certainly welcome to do so. You just have to reach out to us and then we can organize workshops to draft proposals with a Franco-Belgian collaboration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valérie, for this very detailed presentation of Cluster 6. 
And now we will go to Sylvia with a few words on the famous Horizon Europe program. Okay, oui. Donc, uh, bonjour de ma part aussi. Good afternoon to you all. I am Sylvia and I work at the University of Ghent. I'm going to talk to you about a specialized team specializing in supporting the Horizon Europe program and I will now switch to English. Uh, at Ghent University, it's called U-Team. We are located at the Research Coordination Office of Ghent University. And lately, with the start of Horizon Europe, we decided to expand our team. So we are about in total 30 persons, so that's a lot. And we made three ambitious goals for Horizon Europe. And the first one is to increase the number of researchers that are, who are involved in Horizon Europe projects, to increase the number of projects, but also to increase the number of coordinated projects. And on the graph, uh, that you see there, these are figures from the European Commission from Horizon 2020, and you can see that for cluster six, we are already in the top 10. Um, but we want to do better, so that's why we have made these three ambitious goals and why we have expanded our team. So that's how we work. We have a team uh, giving support in the pre-award phase, and the pre-award phase is a phase of the proposal development. And then we also have a quite different team to give support after the project is granted. So there the project managers will step in, while before uh, we have account managers who help to develop the proposal and also financial, legal and administrative assistance. So let's go back to the first goal was to increase the number of researchers. And when we, um, when we analyzed our figures from Hor seven years Horizon 2020 participation, we could see that we had a very unequal distribution of uh, the projects going to certain researchers. So basically we found that 20% of our researchers account for 55% of the projects uh, that we are engaged in. So how to increase the number of researchers? Our strategy is to target newcomers especially, so meaning the young professors, but also professors who have only experience in national funding. And you have the ones who say, yeah, it's much easier, they are not used to work at the European level or they do not have even the network to do so. Um, we also target underrepresented disciplines. For example, I showed you the figures of cluster six, but we are less successful, for example, in cluster two, which is more social, social and humanities. Um, also, we try to bring in the social sciences much more in other clusters. So we try to look cross-cluster also to bring our expertise into certain call topics. The second goal is to increase the number of the projects, and we do that by increasing the success rate um, and giving guidance from topic analysis to proposal development, and also by increasing the number of proposals. And we create awareness amongst our researchers that there are opportunities within Horizon Europe. Uh, we promote uh, the program and we do also, uh, we have also a proactive strategy in matchmaking. We match topics to researchers, so we will proactively mail them or phone them or pay a visit to them and to tell them, hey, this topic is really fitting what you are doing and maybe you should uh, find a consortium or even coordinate it. So that's also our third goal, is to increase the number of coordinated projects. And actually, we do that by giving this main support. So the people who are supporting in the pre-proposal phase, they also um, give the guidance content-wise. So all these people are scientists, they have a scientific, they had a scientific career before stepping in to the central department. They have a PhD in the certain 
uh, themes so they know, they, they understand it, and then get, they can give active guidance. Um, there is also the incentive of the project manager that I mentioned before. Um, these are paid centrally, so once the project is granted for a coordinator, we, um, they get a project manager standard one day a week, that, and this person will help them to organize meetings, uh, to look for the deliverables, and other uh, stuff that scientists um, usually don't like. And they still have also the possibility in certain cases to have extra consultancy. So if we see that an extra consultant is needed, they can get a support of 10,000 euros. So when we look to the figures, you can also see on the graph that we have, uh, we see an increase in coordinator projects since the expansion of our team and since the start of Horizon Europe. So that's it for all. Um, so I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation and pre explaining to us the various processes. I would like to talk about the issues. What are the hurdles you are facing as supporters, as uh, um, helpers in those projects? But what are the obstacles to the projects? and uh, what do you do to help um, the stakeholders um, facing those issues or solving them? So who wants to take the floor? One of the barriers that we see with our researchers is that, um, especially when they are newcomers, they are not familiar uh, with the language, for example, the language that is used in the topic. So it's a little bit policy language. And um, also to fill in the form, it, it, it's, uh, the way you write it um, is also um, important because otherwise you're not successful. So you have to write it the way that the Commission wants it. And especially also with Horizon Europe, you have um, specific definitions and terms like uh, pathways to impact. Uh, you have to develop an exploitation strategy you also have to link with societal impact. Sometimes it's difficult for some researchers, especially the ones who are more in exact sciences. They don't know how to, they know it, but they don't know how to put it on paper. So that's for them. And that's why it's so important to guide them and to learn them the tips and the tricks and to say, okay, basically it's not so difficult, but to get them over this barrier, sometimes it's, it's you, you need to convince them and yeah. I believe that the first obstacle is linked to the potential project carriers. Some might say this looks too complicated, the success rate is way too weak, five, six, seven, eight, sometimes 10, 12 percent. So a lot of effort for not a lot of results. And so there's a bit of a mental hurdle that needs to be um, destroyed. And that is one of the reasons of the existence of CP uh, Wallonie. And I can see my colleague in the room, and I'm thinking of him. So the national contact point provides support, and that support is essential. The people in the national contact point know the context, they know the environment, they know the stakeholders, the programs, the European call for projects, and so they know how to present a project. And that is essential. We need to call upon the individuals, the contacts in the national contact point. And next to that, we need our own networks because building a project does not happen automatically. You need to work on it upstream. You need to use your contacts left and right. You will call upon complementary skills, various people who are close to you and all those skills together 
all those people will build the project. And once the European funding is granted, first of all, congratulations, because that is quite the achievement. And it is not a small funding. And this opened a lot of doors, not only in the research, but it opened doors to new markets. You will hire new staff. So it goes way further than just leading research on one topic. Indeed, the need for, for good guidance to write uh, applications or project proposals. For the FWO, maybe another concern or obstacle might be also success rate for some of the, the funding channels and maybe for other funders as well. But we, we receive hundreds of, of very good proposals um, who are written very well, scientifically very solid proposals. But of course, there are uh, there is funding, but there are limits to the funding. So yeah, I think for regular channels, we are now around 22, 23 percent success rate. But this means that a lot of other excellent researchers or proposals that we have to disappoint them. So I think success rates might also be um, a concern for some channels. Quand on analyse when you analyze the results, we can identify some shortcomings. So for cluster six of Horizon in France, usually we find the same stakeholders over and over, the big research institutes in RAI, CNRS, uh, and so on. And so the Ministry of Research would like to involve all the research stakeholders private and public ones. So we would like to involve more universities. As of today, we don't have enough. We want to use the local authorities. They are quite invisible. PMEs, associations, NGOs, schools, and the citizens. So what do you do to prevent those shortcomings? is that the NCPs try to seize the day and they try to identify what is possible at the regional level to motivate the regional stakeholders like the local authorities. So we organize events in the regions. We already had one, for example, and very soon we are going to organize an event for NGOs the European Commission highlights the multiple stakeholders approach in the framework of Horizon. So that means in a consortium, you need to find researchers, you need people working on the ground, you need farmers, you need civil society representatives, NGOs, citizens. And so that means that every time we try to organize events together with all those stakeholders so as to raise awareness and to try to motivate to involve themselves in those consortia. And uh, it's same with PMEs, so, um, um, SME, sorry, small and middle uh, um, enterprise. So we also want to involve them more in our project. I would like maybe to repeat what you just said, but in Wallonia, it's similar. We organize information evenings, so support sessions, and we also have an, a grant which is given to individuals who presented a project. So it's an incentive measure, financial incentive, and that grant is not big. It's between 3,500 and 10,000 euros. And we are currently in negotiation with the minister so as to make that grant available to others. And we also want to make the grant financially stronger. We want to we want it to reach 25,000 euros. So that would be a financial incentive. And in France, we have something similar for two-stage project in the framework of Horizon Europe for coordinated project by French citizens who passed the first phase and need to prepare for the second one. So the National Research Agency gives 
out a 30,000 grant to help prepare for the second stage. And uh, the um, national research, um, the INR, is under the Ministry of Research. Thank you very much. And I think we are done with that first roundtable of the afternoon. Thank you very much for listening to us.